Every year on February 2nd, groundhogs across the United States are hoisted out of their dens to predict the end of winter. If you've ever wondered how an overweight rodent became the final word in meteorological forecasting, you've come to the right place, as this is the real history of Groundhog's Day. For those unaware, Groundhog Day is an event in the United States and Canada where a live groundhog is pulled from its burrow and held aloft to a crowd. If the weather is clear and the animal's shadow can be seen, that means there will be six more weeks of winter. And if not, then there will be an early spring. This tradition is most often attributed to a Pennsylvania Dutch superstition that groundhogs would naturally wake from hibernation and emerge from their burrows in early February to check the weather and then retreat back into their dens if tidings were dire. The reality, of course, is far more complex and involves a cultural of animal weather predictors going all the way back to ancient Europe. The date of February 2nd is noteworthy as it's the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. Why such importance is placed on the animal shadow has been lost to time, but many ancient cultures believed that descending into the underworld robs a being of its shadow, making it truly dead, and an animal living in a cave can only symbolize the rebirth of spring if it too has died. So if the animal sees its shadow, it must resume its death-like sleep, as spring cannot come until its death is complete. If you're confused why a lovely clear winter day would be seen as a bad omen, you're not alone. The tradition stems from agricultural societies, and a sunny day, and hence a dry day, means that no winter precipitation is falling, and thus no moisture will be available for spring crops. Even worse would be if it was a warm winter's day, which tricks the planted seeds of the natural world into blooming, bringing on a false spring, and making the new growth especially vulnerable to a late frost. How groundhogs came to represent all of this is a bit more complicated. Originally, the day didn't involve them at all. Instead, people used other prognosticating mammals like marmots, badgers, and bears, all of which hibernate to varying degrees. Early folklore suggested that bears in particular, marveled at for their size and power, slept underground without eating for six weeks every year, going to ground on the winter solstice and not emerging again until February. The first sighting of a bear outside of its den in February was a sure sign of spring, but no curious farmer wants to wait outside of a bear's den and be the first thing it sees when it wakes up hangry. As bears became less common in Europe, a new and hopefully less dangerous animal was needed to take its ceremonial place. Other Old World variations on this tradition included the fox and the badger, though these both led to more problematic encounters with waking, grumpy indigenous wildlife. The physiology of hibernating animals is truly remarkable. A groundhog's body temperature drops from 37 to 10 degrees Celsius during the winter. That's a drop of nearly 50 degrees Fahrenheit. A groundhog's heart rate will even slow to just 14 beats a minute leaving it in a near comatose state that doesn't grow, age, or wake easily when touched. An especially useful characteristic if you have to shove your hand in their den on a cold February morning. In the medieval era, the Catholic Church tried its best to adopt this pagan holiday, rechristening February 2nd as Candlemas, the day Christ was brought to the temple for his presentation. It sits as another feast day on the Catholic liturgical calendar and is marked by a candlelit procession, which in turn follows an even older Roman candle lighting tradition at the Feast of Februa, from which we take the month of February's name. Even in non-German-speaking countries, sayings and portents of winter's end still crept into the supposedly Christianized day. In northern England and Scotland, the saying went, If candle must be fair and clear, there'll be twelve winters in the year. Trois, meaning two in this case. Early settlers to Pennsylvania in the United States were largely German-speaking immigrants, and as so often happens, they brought their European folklore with them. There were few badgers, though, to be found in New England, and a new animal was needed for the February 2nd ceremony. Enter Grundocks, grunt badgers, from which groundhogs get their name, whose original Latin family name, Arctomus, the bear rat, is unlikely to be a coincidence. These marmot relatives would be pulled from their homes on February 2nd, waved around in the sky for a bit, and afterwards cooked up into a lovely midwinter meal. In case you're curious, diaries from the period say groundhog tastes like a cross between pork and chicken. And if you're wondering at this point why so many people through the years would keep coming together for a seemingly silly event and a midwinter feast, I can only assume you live in a mild climate. 
As a weather-predicting device, the modern ceremony is woefully inaccurate. The most famous groundhog meteorologist, Puxatawney Phil, is only correct about 40% of the time, but still the celebration lives on, as most who live in cold climates are desperate for any reason to leave their homes come February. Groundhog Day's continued celebration in the United States is largely owed to the fact that it's universally humorous to see a grown man hoist up a furry animal and then speak to it. While the 1993 Bill Murray film of the same name helped to propel the event to an international scale. So on the next Groundhog's Day, sit back, have a laugh, and remember that you're watching a lighthearted tradition that goes back to before history was recorded. Thanks for watching.